ông cô chú ông nương dụng đẹp cảm to cái chân ba này tệ vị thi sạm ca hay nâng đòi vị thi cả chun từ cầm đầm nà thái bình nhát bị cái bên nó cả nông ca bên to cả tăng sản lượng để đào chụp buộc sạ xây steel header sôm chơi Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon. Mr. Hedder, I'd like you please to go to file three. Mr. Hedder, I'd like you please to go to file three. Mr. Hedder, I'd like you please to go to file three. Tab one. Mr. Trong tab one, tab mũi. I hope you have a document E3 slash 1991 publication Pol Pot and Q Sampong. Can you confirm that you have that document, please? Mr. Hedder, I've got one without an E number, but it's that D number. D number was D36-7.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1
Um, Michael Vickery is a very veteran historian who's earlier, who's primary work is on pre-modern Cambodia, but he's also rather extensively on contemporary politics, and this is just a and reading on on the same page, same ERA, under a heading Q Sampon and the quote liberation close in what appears to have been a calculated abuse of trust in which he was held, Q Sampon actively helped just before the end of the war to set up long null military personnel and civil servants for easy execution. The esteem in which he was held meant that some of them allowed themselves to become sitting ducks for murder. Thus, as the Communist Party of Cambodia advanced towards an all-out military victory during the first four months of 1975, Q Sampong twice signaled those who had been fighting against it, that only the seven top leaders amongst them would be executed upon defeat. And footnote 25 lists, uh, lists of people, and you carry on. On the 24th to 25th of February, Q Sampong chaired the Second National Congress, a meeting of members of Grunk, who resided inside the country, and 273 representatives of Funk associations and the army. The Congress declared that the seven traitors must die, but that other high-ranking Khmer Republic personalities could join the Sinuk side. Then, on the 1st of April, a little more than two weeks before Phnom Penh was captured, Q Songkhon spoke in a live broadcast over the Communist Party-run radio. He attacked the seven traitors by name, but appealed to the officers and men of the Khmer Republic Armed Forces to lay down their arms and join the Sahinic side. You're referencing their the chairing of the Second Congress and then a broadcast on the 1st of April. Can I ask first of all about the 1st of April broadcast? Um, there's not a specific footnote to do with that. Can you remember what source material you were looking at in, res in respect of the 1st of April 1975 broadcast? Or was, were you in Cambodia at that time? Did you hear it? How does that appear in the paper? Um, well, the footnote, as you see, is to a chronology Chong Krong Doi Tim Khai, Dai Pelu Kot Chi. Um, and I relied on that, I think, for this particular piece of work because where I was at the time, at the Australian National University, did not have a complete set of the foreign broadcast information service translations of uh, radio, public radio broadcasts. Um, I was in Cambodia on um, the first day. Um, we didn't in those days have access to the, daily, the, the FBIS daily report, but the embassy did make available the type version of those uh, uh, broadcasts, um, and I read every day. So I, I'm, I can be fairly certain I read it at the time, but I didn't have that piece of paper in hand when I wrote this particular piece. So instead, I relied upon Carney's chronology, which was based on the FBIS translations. And so we're clear what we all call the Fibis foreign broadcast information in this paper. You did read, read those at the time back in 1975, but they weren't available to you when you were writing this paper. Is that correct? Yes, that's, that's correct. correct. I just want to ask a question about some these Fibis broadcasts. I mean, uh, this particular broadcast is E3 slash 118. But 
I just want to get a picture really about how regularly these broadcasts were coming out and how you were able to be reading the Fibbis material. Do you understand the question? Um, the, the U.S. government personnel who did the monitoring of these broadcasts and the translations. And what would happen then would be that the translations would be transmitted to U.S. embassies around the world in a kind of teletype form. Um, and those were those teletype translations were considered public documents uh, within the U.S. government system. Um, so one could go every day, as I did, not every day, but. In order, uh, often enough that I could read every day's output to a reading room in the U.S. Embassy in the top 10 uh, to see what Fibbis had translated. And then some, but not all, of those teletypes were then being compiled in the U.S. Embassy in the so-called daily report. Uh, semi, it was a, a kind of in a magazine form uh, uh, which was deposited uh, in the library around the world. Not Australia. Men, men, like There's also a British uh, version, as you know, which is a carbon copy as far as Cambodia is concerned, so called Summary of World Broadcast, which had even fewer items in it, but essentially it was the same text. I just want to ask a question about that. I know what you're speaking about, but I just want to explain to the audience. Certain documents on the case file are Fibbis broadcasts, and then there's a copy of the same material. But with SWB in the top. Hence, that's, I think, what you're doing. Now, I think you said that you came to Cambodia in 1973. Is that uh, yeah, first time in 1969, but only to pass through to work um, in 1973. Can I ask, um, was this in the capacity as a journalist, a reporter, or if you like, what was the reason and purpose background to you coming to Cambodia in 1973? Um, I finished my bachelor's degree at Cornell in Asian uh, Studies. Um, I wanted to be a journalist. Um, in fact, I went first to Hong Kong and then to Bangkok to try and make my living as a journalist uh, working on China or on Thailand. In Hong Kong, there was too much competition. In Thailand, there was no story. So, uh, uh, a kindly Hong Kong veteran journalist in Bangkok said, you should go to Cambodia uh, because there's not a lot of competition uh, and there's a story there that virtually writes itself. So, I followed that advice. And my recollection is that I arrived in Cambodia in May of 1973. Can you remember what the first couple of events were that you reported? Um, the first one was the Cambodian Cambodian the, the big story at that juncture was the fact that the um, U.S. Congress had, had passed I guess what was a law, um, ordering an end to U.S. bombing of Cambodia. And the cutoff date for that end was 15 August 1973. Um, and there was a widespread expectation that as soon as the American bombing ended, uh, the Khmer Rouge would march into Phnom Penh and the Khmer Rouge would collapse. 
สาธารณรัฐไม้นังรลุมกูชีแต่สนาดิไซแต่ยูรุอาชีดมนังออดนังกรอกกันเนาะดมนังกรอกนั้นมีท่าอำนาจของผู้คนที่มีการฉลาดฉลองสาธารณรัฐผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมืองผู้เกี่ยวกับการเมือง What was the extent of the contact between the members of the journalistic reporting community? Can you give us a feel of sort of how many people were regularly reporting? And sort of who was going out in, into the field? Do you understand what I mean by into the field? Just try and paint a picture, can you please? Of the sort of world you were in and the sort of people you were with. อาชีพเดลุกเพื่อการอุตสาหกรรมนุ่งตาเมียนนาคลาหนึ่งขนมพนมปิ้งคราวพนมปิ้งดำไปโปรโมทพอร์มีนชิดดำจำลายเมียน
ដឹងអំពីប្រវត្តិហើយនឹងប្រវត្តិខ្មែរក៏ទៅ <coughs> 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 15th of August 1973 No, at, 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 at that point, uh, uh, the, the U.S. Air Force bombing completely uh, ended. Uh, however, the, the, the Khmer Republic Armed Forces uh, continued as did the uh, shelling of the uh, Khmer Republic ground uh, troops. Uh, I'm going to ask you some I, don't want, I can't go through day by day, obviously, every day that you are here, but can I ask the question in this way, and you tell me if it doesn't help the way I ask. You arrive in May 1973, is that correct? And I think you said you left in April 1975, but I can't remember the date in April. Can you please clarify? Yes, it was the 11th of April, and Neil Davis, who I just mentioned, and I uh, flew out with the American evacuation of its personnel and U.S. citizens, and others who wanted to or managed to go along. I want to ask you about battlefields from May 1973 to the 11th of April 1975, with this specific question in mind. Did you yourself see or did others tell you or was information coming to you in helpful about what was happening? តាមមានអ្វីកើនឡើងក្នុងការនៃដែលរឿងដំណើរនោះគឺទីហ៊ុនដំណើរដែលគេចាប់ខ្លួនបាននោះគឺទីហ៊ុនដំណើរដែលគ
ports which were on the American evacuation. Uh, but the American evacuation of U.S. personnel and, and others who uh, wanted to or managed to go on. Now, in this period, were you living in the United States? Were you living in the United States? Uh, no, I lived in Phnom Penh, initially on the south-west side of the city, the outskirts of Phnom Penh on the south-west side. Uh, I moved out of there because we took a lot of income from the Rouge 105 shell. Uh, uh, to the center of town to be away from the 105 shelling coming from the southwest and the 107 rockets coming from the east. So I've set myself up in the smack in the middle of town to avoid the incoming. Again, one of those paint the picture questions. What I mean by this is you're living in Phnom Penh. You've got shells coming in. How regularly, how frightened or not, just give us a bit of a feeling. You're in a house in Phnom Penh or somewhere and shells are coming in. Just bring this to life, please. You sound like my Time magazine editors. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yes, I mean, it was, it was certainly scary to be under the shell fire when we when I lived in the south west of town. Uh, um, I had to dig a bunker under my house, uh, to learn how many meters of dirt I needed to have one to to one the Similarly, when rocks were coming in from the east, one could sit on what's now the waterfront and hear those rockets being fired and see them coming in over our heads normally uh, and then landing in the center of town uh, around Monorome, people being killed. Uh, and the city was also, you know, the, the socioeconomic situation in the city was very fraught and tense. As everybody knows, there were a lot of people who came in from the countryside who were in Phnom Penh. Um, the, uh, the political situation was primarily anti-government, uh, particularly among students, sort of a classic classic revolutionary situation, if you will. The students and the workers were anti-government. Uh, the middle class, such as it was, was very tiny. It was mostly uh, also anti-government. Um, and this sort of leads into uh, some of the stuff that's referred to in, 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 in the document that was the beginning of this discussion. Um, I mean, I think I, I refer in, the, in, 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 in this, uh, in, in this uh, document, I, I, it's been a while since I looked at it, refer in this document to an unpublished Time magazine story I did about the Khmer Rouge leadership. Um, there was another story I was asked to do, which was never got published. Maybe there weren't enough atmospheres. Um, and that was simply what uh, people in Phnom Penh thought uh, was going to happen no? when the Khmer Rouge came in. Um, and this was in the context of, of a time uh, in which there was an enormous debate going on in the United States. Um, focused primarily on Vietnam, um, which Cambodia was, of course, famously only a sideshow, about whether or not the communists won, which by 1970 is whether or not there would be a bloodbath. Um, so my editors asked me to write a story about whether or not well, whether Cambodians in Phnom Penh thought there would be a bloodbath or not. Um, Part of the background to the thinking that's in this piece um, is that for the most part, people thought no. 
ពន្តែរូបភាពខុសក្នុងតែតងតាមរបៀបជាយុវស្លាវីមូឌរ៉េតហ្វ៊ាកាមដែលលក្ខណៈជាកុម្មុយនិស្តទៅទៅទៅទ
Now, I know it's perhaps obvious, but you said that the 105s came from the special zone commanded by Ian Lorne, alias Nat, and the 107 millimetres from the east were by the East Zone Division 1. Whose troops or what troops? I don't mean overall. Under what global command command? Uh, these are Khmer Rouge zonal divisions operating under the overall direction of the General Staff, which was at this time uh, chaired by, already chaired by Sun Sen, and answered to a military command post uh, headed by Pol Pol Pol. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, it, um, it appears to me, or it might appear, that there is a, um, a mixture going on of eyewitness testimony of the witness of what he saw in coming in 1975 uh, of information as to who was commanding these various troops. Now, and the overall both are admissible. Um, I understand that, but I think it's, it's really good to make that distinction while we have uh, the present testimony going on. I agree with Maloney, friend. That's absolutely right. Back in 1975, when the was going on, well, let's, let's make that the first question to clarify this. Can you help us when you first directly became aware of shelling that was affecting you or affecting Pumpen generally? What year, what month, or can you only be general in this respect? Um, probably dry season of 73, 74, uh, but in a bigger way, in the dry season of 74, uh, but that now, you've said something about the troops who were shelling. You've mentioned a Japanese attaché. And you were saying that was the source for where they were coming from. Can we clarify that? Is that correct? Uh, yes, there was the order of battle information that was shared with me the Japanese military attaché who sources undoubtedly the military intelligence. Um, there was also some material, again, originating with um, Fank. The Khmer, Khmer, Khmer Republic military <coughs> and civilian intelligence, <coughs> which was early <coughs> um, organograms, organizational charts <coughs> uh, prepared, um, on, prepared by, either, by Khmer Republic intelligence, either military or civilian, about the structure and organization of the Khmer political and military, um, which identify these areas uh, and associated particular military units with the main commanders. Maybe 
Để kịch bản đang đôi chỗ hai phê lần Reasonably accurate detail À, phê lần cứ thả hạ về miền phép sập cực À, miền tê Ní cứ phôn ở miền phép nè Nghi sập ngạc đại bản phụ đỏ Âm ôi xin hạ lục quang dù thiêu sản tụt Chuyện bọn hãy gọi một đòn Đòn sản tụt ảm rích Hãy phôn ở miền ít liê một đòn của nhóm đài I want to ask questions about two documents or two natures of documents. An order of battle and an organogram. You say that information was leaked to you by the US Embassy. You've mentioned sectors, districts, and the like, but in terms of the question I'd asked earlier, you were talking about a military structure. And you mentioned two commanders whose names I can't remember now. Uh, in Lawn, alias Nat. And then you said something about Son Sen, and you mentioned another person as well. Can I ask this? From the order of battle material, or the organogram material, can you remember whose name was at the top of either of those documents, or whose name was next down, or, if it helps, go upwards from the commander you mentioned? Well, in at least some of these materials, slot saw was at the top, um, and that was something which uh, there was some dispute within the intelligence community about how accurate that was. Uh, but after the uh, recording done by Utsarin, who had been in the on the fringes of the party apparatus and then defected to the Khmer Republic side. ដែលគាត់ថាក្នុងក្បាលមិនសិនរបស់សាធារណរដ្ឋ my recollection is in those days, the Warren Bath was identified as the head of the special zone, but by one of his other aliases, like Sok Tuk, the alias used in the document. Certainly, Tamok was mentioned. In the east, certainly, Sao Pum was mentioned as the head of the zone. I think by his one of his one of his aliases, Vana. And the other zone secretaries for the most part are accurately identified. Yum in the northeast, Yum in the northwest, and so on. So as I say, it was fairly. Fairly accurate. For the most part, Mr. Panjai. มันเรียกว่าตลาดค้าเรียบจำในกบาลมาโครโฟนก็อ่อยล้อเงี้ยหมดเลยใช่ไหมให้ให้ให้เช็ดคอนเทนต์ก็มาเช็ดเพจเช
Bah, let's get access to these orders of battle, organograms, the Japanese military attaché. Um, did you have more or less access than other reporters to your special position? Was this generally available? Can you help on that question, please? Um, I don't really know what the competition had. Um, I think there were, there were some people in some embassies who seemed to appreciate the fact that I was a bit of an archive rat, that I was looking into the background and the history and so on of these, uh, of these movements, of the movements that gave rise to the, to the Khmer Rouge. So those in the embassies who had a kind of interest in history, uh, I think maybe were more sympathetic to me than they might have been to some of the other journalists. It didn't appear to, to them to have that Sort of but I, I don't know what other people saw. And it didn't, didn't pass it on to my colleagues. So I, I, I don't know whether they already had more than me or not. Now, this is you mentioned some broadcasts earlier in your testimony in the sense of phrase dry up the people from the enemy. But I want to ask about broadcasts during the time from May 1973 when you arrived up to the 11th of April 1975 when you left. Now what I mean by broadcasts is broadcasts by or on behalf of, calling it as broadly as I can, the front. Now again, without sounding like one of your news editors, can you bring this to life in terms of how often these broadcasts were, what sorts of subjects they covered, where the radio was if you listened to them, whether you listened to them on your own or whether with other journalists, but how did these broadcasts, if there were broadcasts, feature in your life? Um, I listen, as, in some ways, just as part of my language study, increasingly to the early evening นึงในเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเ
where the broadcasts were actually coming Occasionally, there were broadcasts that I want to concentrate on the broadcast by Q Sampon or in the name of Q Sampon. Can you tell us? You've mentioned talk of battlefields, you've mentioned talk of policy. Can you remember when there was a broadcast by Q Sampon or on behalf of Q Sampon? Did the subject matter differ from what you've just said, or can you elaborate? Um, frankly, not specifically no. I mean, it's, it's all, and it's all jumbled up in my memory with my contemporaneous reading of the Fibis and my subsequent reading, rereading, rereading, re rereading of, of those broadcasts. I can't separate them when, when that information got In respect of the broadcasts by Q Sompon or on behalf of Q Sompon, one, two, half a dozen, eight, ten, can't remember. What was the sort of number, just roughly? Do you remember of such broadcasts? Maybe a dozen. I've taken you on a big side route from Pol Pot and Q Son Pom, which was document number E. 3 slash 3169. So can we return to that? Mr. Header, please, Look, just header, to remind you again, file 3, three index one. 1, and we were on page eight. 8, same ERNs as previously given. Now, I asked you a specific question about the 1st of April, broadcast over Khmer Communist Party-run radio. It was the information about Q Sompon chairing the Second National Congress. It may be a difficult question, but can you remember whether that was from a broadcast or FIBIS, or can't you now say? Um, I mean, this was a pretty big thing at the time. And I, I'm, I think I can say that I can remember reading the blue Fibis version of this, of this reportage on this purported Congress sitting there in that U.S. Embassy reading them. Again, on uh, same document still, still the same page, so E3 slash 3169. You started in the paper to talk about the Communist Party of Kampuchea's policy vis-à-vis -vis the officers and men of the defeated army and many of the Khmer Republic's civil servants. I don't think it's fair that I read the next words because the rest of the page was based largely on confessions. But on top of the next page, which is English 0008, French 0072072072 On this topic, you said, there is also documentary evidence of the involvement in executions of a military unit that entered Phnom Penh from the Special Zone, and which after the war was designated Division 703. This is in the form of an order signed by the Division Secretary to execute people, mostly Khmer Republic Army officers in the Division's custody. 
dated the 4th of June 1975, and it reads, all these 17 persons have been assessed by the party, and the party has decided they are to be exterminated. The comrades are asked to implement this policy of the party. And footnote 30, you'll see at the uh, bottom in the footnotes references pin decision 4th of June 1975 and then a copy of this document was kindly provided to the author you by David Hawke. Again, a little bit pleased about David Hawke and how you came into possession of this document. David Hawke David uh, Hawke was a executive director of Amnesty International United States section. And after having left that post, uh, came to Southeast Asia. I believe for a religious NGO based in Thailand. Um, and developed an interest in what had happened in Cambodia. ហើយរៀបចងក្រងអ្វីដែលបានកើតឡើងនៅក្នុងប្រទេសកម្ពុជាពីរឿងនេះឡើងហើយគាត់បានមកទៅ <coughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, same page in English. Khmer has moved on one, French the same. Heading. Q Sampon under Pol Pot in power. In May 1975, the Communist Party of Cambodia held a congress and it confirmed Khieu Sampon's membership in the Central Committee. He remained a Central Committee member throughout the period that the Communist Party held power. But it is, uh, he is believed not to have been elevated to membership in the Standing Committee while the party was still in power. Although the exact composition of this seven to nine man body between 1975 and 1978 is still not known with complete certainty, Q. has never been identified as among the possible members. However, minutes of Standing Committee quorum held in 1975 and 1976 revealed that he regularly attended them. It's the footnote in support of this, footnote 53, uh, sorry, 33, and you state the minutes of meetings of the Standing Committee, and then you give, I'll give the dates. 2nd November 1975, 22 February 1976, 11 March 1976, 17 May 1976, and 30 May 1976, all this Q Sampon is present. These documents were kindly provided to the author by David Chandler. The point of the question here, Mr. Hedder, is this. At this stage, in, I think it's 1991 when you wrote this paper, you're mentioning here only five records of standing committee minutes showing attendance by Kim Song So is it right that at this stage, when you were writing the paper, You'd only seen the five that you mention in the minutes in the footnote 33. Um, I, the answer to that, I think, has to be I guess. Um, I suppose that those were the ones that. 
ยังเกิดทากำหนดให้นี่ได้เอเดวิดเชนเดลบานพระดอลมาออกยงถ้าคุณสมบัติมันติดบางอายทบานคือตอนนี้ในตรองแถวสุพิจิตรสปรามนู่ตามเด็กพิมพ์จำตอนมันตอบเอาไว้ในการลำดับแค่อุสเพียจัดสปรัมคือเมียนสมาร์กิจประชุมระบบขณะมันเชิมคิวสมพรเป็นนั่งบนตอนบานดำลายลุงเตะหรือโฮตันอัลไคแม็กระไรน้ำควันกระโวนโรยจัดสปรัมโอ้ยไอ้เนาะมันไม่เป็นไรเอาไว้กลัวเพียบเอาได้ไหมสนาจิเบอของนุ๊ก You then go on talking about the anomaly of him not being a formal member of the standing committee, but actually attending meetings and new statements. This anomaly must be viewed in the light of subsequent developments, particularly the purge by execution of standing committee members who were accused of being Vietnamese agents because Pol Pot knew or suspected that they opposed his policies and leadership. And at, at, 19, at, at footnote 34, you mention the people who that refers to. Is that correct? Yes. From your research, interviews, c o n s i are you aware of any other persons? Who were members of the Central Committee? Attending standing committee meetings on a regular or frequent basis. Um. Um. สมจมตัวจมปูสมนุนนี้แต่หาทาการบัญชีอัมพีการบันดังระบบสาสัยรูปนี้อัมพีวัดกมิญระบบสมาชิกจำสมาชิกการประชุมดอตเตียจูรวมประชุมวิจิพนัยมุยในการสร้างเชียวบานไอโรเคยมันเป็นสาสัยทอมดาอาจบังฮันพอตามเตียโตในจมันที่บานเตโดยชนะขนมถนัดโลกจีสาสัยมันอาจจะเฟอร์กาบอมพลือเตียโตตึงเหลือขนาดแบบจีจมดิ้งแบบนี้เลยเราส่งจุดต่อสมาคมทราบเรื่องนี้ยมยลให้ลงเวทีวีและลงจุดต่อเพื่อเข้าใจริบชำเคลียร์สมนุกเข้มแรงวิ่งบาทตามประพบอังเฮดคือปรมีนอังเฮด Does any factual information indicate other persons who were members of the Central Committee attending standing committee meetings on a regular or frequent basis? Uh, the one. ชำลายมันแน่แต่ยมนึกเคยนึกคือซูวาซีฮาวทัดเดือนคราวปีก่อนนู้นยมมันมันอาจนึกเคยเปลี่ยนเปลี่ยนเตะนึกเป็นนี่สมนุห์ฮายังนึกในยีปีเดือนนึกเปลี่ยนมันตอบเตี้ยนึกตำบลดัลเอออันดัล Just for the record, E3/3169. E3/3169. Yes. 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 Yes.
As Q Sampon himself later the opposition to Pol Pot was stronger even than in the Central Committee. In an interview with the author on the 4th of August 1980, he alleged that Khmer agents who were the Vietnamese infiltrated into the Central Committee didn't reach half of its membership, but in the Standing Committee it was almost half. The first question is, is that what you've written in the book? And then I'm going to take you to another document. Uh, yes, that's certainly what I've written in the book. Same file, tab six. Tab six. Thank you, Mr. President. Just make <coughs> a sort of some of look at the question. In my own way, this is always from the cause of the prevent confusion. Uh, it, I have in front of you me E3 slash 3169, I think it's the same document and another reference. Uh, if it helps, I've got E3 slash 3169 as the document. And then the page I'm on for the English ERN is 0008774. I think my learned friend, can he indicate that he's looking at one that appears in the published version, which was D366 stroke 7.1.14, as there are two versions on case map or the case file. There is the published version, which is quite black and quite grainy, and then the better copy in plain black and white typescript is also available under E3 ในอัตราบัตรสหรัฐอเมริกาหรือ There are two documents under the case file, E3-3169. Yes, that's what I was referring to. I think my learned friend has this version. There's also this version on the case file, and it's much easier to read without the black graininess of this document. I think my learned friend has this version on the case file, I'll make sure I give on every page now the ERNs. I think I have been doing, but uh, I'll try and help as much as I can. Thank you, Mr. President. ໄດ້ລັດບາດລາການຕໍາຫຼວງກົນດອກກະໄລຕໍາຫຼາກ